Okay, with our full study, we're up to number 65. Still in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 2. How interesting the full study has been for those who are lost and those that are saved. Those that are worldly Christians and those that serve the Lord. In Proverbs 15, verse 2, the tongue of the wise, there's the wise, Seek it, uh, excuse me, use his knowledge. All right. So a mouth, tongue of a wise person not only uses knowledge, but it uses it the right way, the right time. But the mouth of fools, opposite of the wife, wise, pours out foolishness. And with foolishness comes fools. And with fools come foolishness. And how often and how many times have we seen in this fool study, especially in the book of Proverbs, the mouth, the mouth, the mouth, what foolish things we say. And this verse, oh, it fits for Christians, not only for the lost people. How many things have we opened our mouth to foolishness? And the Matthew records to us that Jesus said, every idle word, we shall give an account. And of that idle word, we would find the foolishness of our mouths. Stupid talk. Talk just to talk that when we should have been quiet. Now, the wise mouth would direct somebody to salvation of the gospel. A wise mouth will help grow a Christian, will help comfort a, a, someone in that needs comfort and a foolish mouth just joking fooling around unnecessary no purpose oh have i fallen into those hands of the foolish mouth say is serving the lord proverbs 15 5 a fool despises his father's instruction but he that regardeth reproof is prudent so, again, we got the contra in the book of Proverbs. A fool is not prudent, and prudence is not foolish. And we've got children today that are fools that will not heed to their fathers. Saved or lost. A child does not obey his father is foolish. No matter what, he is foolish. A fleshly father or the heavenly father is foolish and a lot of accounts i've seen in the book of proverbs you can take the earthly father and then you can take the heavenly father you can take my son as the children of solomon can also take my son as the children of god and what this verse comes down to verse five is despise is rebellion against the father adam was a fool for taking that fruit and eating it The Bible says to honor thy mother and father. The fool does not. And you can find that in both the New Testament and the Old Testament. A foolish child is one that will not obey the Heavenly Father. A foolish child is one that will not obey his Heavenly Father or his earthly father. More so for both. Because parents are supposed to be, you know, the symbol. The symbol and the, the showing of what God the Father is. Proverbs 15, 7. The lips of the wise. So we got wise. Dispense knowledge. What they know. They give out. They throw out. They talk. What they know. And being wise would be wise things. And then you know as the contra we run into of the wise, we would have the foolish coming up. But, notice how often the word but comes in to be. The heart of the foolish does doeth not so. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things. Jesus said out of the heart comes murder, adulteries, and bad thoughts, and deceit. Our wicked, evil heart that we have. 
And a fool will give in to those sinful natures. A fool will give in to what is wrong, what's improper. A wise man will be instructed to others. A fool, the sinning, the rottenness of the heart. Just let it out. And he has no bridle over his mouth. He has no bridle over his tongue or his lips. It just comes out. That's foolish. He doesn't think. You know, when that moment when we become fools is that moment when we say something. And that instantly those words come out. We say, oh, I wish I never said that. Or later on down the road, oh, I wish I could take those words back. That's foolishness right there. And we need to repent of those sins. There is no knowledge in the heart of the fool. It's the atheist that says in his heart that there is no God. It is the Christian that with the heart he believes unto right righteousness. There is no such thing as foolish knowledge. Never. Knowledge is what you know. Fools do not dispense knowledge. They dispense folly and foolishness. Proverbs 15 verse 4. 15, 15, 14. We did a chapter 14 last time. It shouldn't be chapter 15. The heart, okay, so we're dealing with the heart again. The heart of him that has understanding seeketh knowledge. Well, that seems to go with verse 7. But the mouths of fools feedeth on foolishness. A fool will eat foolishness. They do not study. They do not want to know about knowledge. Their diet is folly. It's unhealthy. Now, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. And understanding is that of the, of the holy, of what we can do for and with God, with what we know and how to apply what we know. And the fool has no knowledge, he has no understanding, and there is no wisdom. And as I said, the diet is unhealthy, it's foolish. A fool is someone who will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if he say, he'll just go about whatever will come to pleases him. A fool will not ever exhort or rebuke or edify anybody with his words. Out of him comes putrid and vomit and just unhealthiness. Because that's what his diet is. Proverbs 15, 20. A wise son, right, wise, so we're going to have a fool. A wise son maketh glad his father. So a father says, hey, that's my son. He does such and such. And listen, it, the son could be broke and living under a bridge and all life look at him as most terrible. But if he does things that the father is glad, whatever, it doesn't have to be a superstar. It doesn't have to be a president. It doesn't have to be an all-time hero. If that son makes his father glad, that's a wise son. A glad father equals a wise son. But a foolish man despises his mother. So any child that has no regard, no respect, no nothing with their mother, the Bible says it is foolish. So if your child despises you, I don't care how great you are to think of them, the Bible says he is a fool. He's outright rejected, ashamed, and wants nothing to do with you. That is a fool. And that's a sin. Proverbs 16, 22. Move out of the chapter to a new chapter. Understanding. We know that's not of the fool. 
is a wellspring, you know, in the climate of the region of Israel where we are, it's desert, it's hot. And, oh, the satisfaction to come to a well and look over and see there's water and to find out that water is fresh, it's sweet, maybe cold. Oh, how satisfying. But, but, and let me find my place again here, 1622. Understand it's a wellspring of light. It's a deep well of light. Much to draw from unto him that has it. So understanding will give you help in life and it will be a great value, a great commodity, commodity of your life. But, you know, this is where we get the expression, understanding is deep, deep understanding. But the instruction of fools is knowledge. I mean, excuse me, full folly. So a fool can give direction, but the Bible says it's folly. And who would want to listen to a few fool? And yet I guarantee that the public school system are filled with educators that are full. And they are paid to train our children. And that, as a result, is why we have a foolish, folly nation of people that reject God, reject the Bible, reject Jesus Christ. Why are we in the religious downplay of where we are in this country? Because we got fools as educators. We got fools in government. We got fools as leaders. And there is no knowledge, there is no wisdom, there is no understanding, there is no of the righteous of a fool. And it's only going to get worse because you're not going to promote a wise Christian of righteousness. You're only going to tear yourself down more. And now we have come into where the churches are becoming foolish. And their folly, which would tear down countries even more the result of the decay of a nation is the fool his foolishness and his folly to where you got a nation that said oh there is no god the bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no god oh what don't we know and we've read through Proverbs. What we don't now know is from the heart, it's from the mouth, and it is the product of a fool. History has been rewritten by fools. Courses in schools have been changed by fools. What a foolish nation we are in. And foolish nations around the world. Proverbs 17, 7. When you follow a fool, you're following folly. And it's a sin. Can you not, not say after 70, number 71 coming up now. 71 verses of the Bible. Can you not say. Lost, saved serving the Lord, saved or living worldly. Can you not say that being a fool is sin? It is. Proverbs 17, 7. Excellent speech. Oh, here comes the mouth and tongue again. We have got people... In the education system, we have got people in the media of television and radio. We have got people in print 
of books and magazines and what have you. We have got much people with their mouth has proclaimed foolish. And from the book of Proverbs and the study of the fool, how much is it related to the mouth? And the fact is, if you're to be a Christian nation, you need to shut up. And speak only of the gospel of Jesus Christ or the edification of growing a Christian. And then other than that, shut up. Sports, shut up. The movies, shut up. My weekend sex activity, shut up. I got this joke. Shut up. With the nonsense of media, you're not going to get a Christian nation. With the nonsense of perverted modern Bibles, you got foolishness. With the nonsense of these worldly hymns, not to Jesus, but to the flesh, our words of foolishness. Proverbs 17, 7. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. There is no excellency of a fool, never mind his mouth, his words, and his tongue. And again, in the realm of this world, there are many foolish people speaking and people listening to the fools and you're not going to get knowledge wisdom and understanding of a fool it's impossible it would break the laws of the bible as we're studying but looky here not finished much less do lying lips a prince? This is not a contra. Along with the foolish, unable to have excellent speech, we put him in the same ship with a liar. And lying is foolish. Lying and foolish talk are sin. Whether you be a prince or you be a beggar. When you lie, you are foolish. Whatever reason to lie is. The Bible says. That you should not bear false witness. That's one of the big ten. And yet, I have seen out of pulpits a lie to get a ha ha hoo hoo ha ha. I have heard preachers tell preacher stories with the fact is that they lived that story and it's a lie. They don't say, well, here is a representation or here is something I heard from another preacher. No, they put the story in their own hands. And it's amazing how in a world of preachers that everybody deals with the same person or the same group of people as the same story spreads from pulpit to pulpit to pulpit. A lie is foolish. And from that, from a lie, there is no knowledge, there is no understanding, and there is no wisdom. It is deceit. Proverbs 17.10 Reproof entereth more into a wise man. There's that wise man again. So who are we going to talk about next? Then a hundred stripes into a fool. Stripes are beating. Christ, according to the book of Revelation and the Gospels, was beaten with a cat of nine tails for us, for our sins. It was not Christ that was the fool. 
but by getting those stripes upon his back for the payment of our sin tells us sinners who we are. Fools, foolish, and foolishness had to be bared upon the back of Jesus because I'm foolish and I'm a fool and I'm in a company of fools. Boy, that sure hits pride. It's a rod of cor correction. Chastisement for a fool does nothing at all. Whereas the mouth or the words will correct the wise man rather than the rods or whips. A fool is beaten and nothing becomes of for him learning. You can see that in the present correctional system that we've got set in America with many fools behind jail who will get released who will be paroled and go out and do the, ser the same very crimes, if not more intense crimes, because they had foolish leaders and structures in jail, how to teach them to be more foolish and more criminal. Where if you were to have a man of God of the Bible, A reproof entereth more into a wise man. If you were to send a man into the prison with a Bible, and the person will get saved and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get in his Bible and read his Bible, and while incarcerated will give his life and his sins to Christ, and will grow in the Lord and come out of the prison system a changed man, a new man, a new creature is not foolish. He has become a wise man and from the Bible study or the chapel service of the right man with the right Bible, he has changed from the fool to wise. Correction has got hold of him. But as the way of salvation, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Broad is the correctional system where many go out and they come right back in. Because they go back into their foolish as a pig goes back to the mire and as a dog goes back to its vomit, the Bible says. I've had that with, with years of, of the prison ministry. They go out and they're right back. Because of foolishness. Sometimes a fool can't be corrected. Why? Is it the corrector? Is it the instructor? instructor? Is it God? No. It's the fool. And we're going to stop here. 72 foolish things so far in the Bible. A fool will not change. A fool will not get right. A fool will rebel. A fool is ashamed. His mouth is of no sense. His values, there are none. But yet there is hope in a fool. If he would turn and repent and receive the instruction. Of God in the Bible in Jesus Christ. But then again, haven't we been through 72 fools, foolish folly? Have I not myself in 72, number 72 that we're at right now, have I not seen myself as a Christian fool? Absolutely. Have I repented of my sins of being fool, foolish, and folly? Yes, I have. So coming to Calvary and receiving Christ as your Savior and getting in a Bible and studying the Bible and being in church does not stop foolishness. 
And there are times, according to Hebrews chapter 12, that our God in heaven, our Father, has to chastise us because we're what? We're foolish. And what more foolish do we have by just studying here that we get involved in the same sin, the same sin, the same sin, over and over and over the same sin? Is that not foolish? That'd be like someone going out with a with a blazer, a Chevy blazer. They go out, they get in the mud, and they come back and they wash their car. And they go back and get in the mud, and they come back and wash the car. They get back in the mud, they wash the car, back in the mud. Get, is that not us and our sins? And then we wonder why, why is my car not clean? And I've got those sins that I enjoy. I've got those sins that I am fighting with. And to return back to them is foolish. There are times the preacher and messages, and even me is preaching and teaching, that God will instruct me to fool. It is in our hands, are we going to remain foolish? Or are we going to change and get right? What do we do with the correction that God gives our way? Do we continue to be fools? Wood, hay, or stubble? Do we graduate out of foolishness and come into wisdom and knowledge and understanding? Gold, silver, and precious stones. And I'm not, and this is a whole different study, but do not take what I'm going to say as the one and only way. But one of the things why man suffers is because of the folly of sin. It is the folly of sin that one, this branches off into several things. One is, number one, it's our own stupidity that sin causes folly. Alcoholism will make you a jerk and ruin your body. It's a proven fact. Sexual sins will probably give you a, a, a disease and it will not be comfortable. It's a fact. But who wants to change when they enjoy their sins? So as a result of the world testifying to you that your sin is bad, and you suffer the consequences of a disease, a, a, a health problem, or broken family, or whatever comes your way, and you continue to go back into it and, and ravishing the moment, that's foolish. And part B of that is that God, our, our Father, for those that are saved, is chastising us, according to Hebrews 12. And he's trying to correct us. He's trying to get us right, which we read today that the, that the fool will not receive the correction. He will not guard the stripes. And we tell God, no, we despise God. We make him unglad by our sin nature, by what we are doing, unpleases him. So we become a fool by not listening to chastisement of God. And we're not making our father glad, being a double fool in the eyes of God. And part C is sometimes may the devil wants to attack us like Job 1 and 2. Because we're doing right. And God loves us. And God is glad for us. And God is happy with us. And God tells the devil, you see that man? And the devil says, oh yeah? I'll show you something. To make us look foolish. Our hearts according to what we read today, is vile, wicked, and foolish. When we get saved, we do not lose that vile heart. We do not lose that deception. We do not become new creatures until we get to glory. We are still sinners. We are sinners saved by grace. Our mouth opens up with stupid things. 
My mouth opens up with preaching. My mouth opens up with Bible teaching. I've spoken to people to lift them up, to help them and comfort them. And yet there are times my mouth has said things stupid. I become a fool. And there are things I've said later on. Oh, man, why did I say that? Whether it's instant, as soon as the words are out, or later on I realize maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's the heart. That's the heart that's foolish. And there are sometimes we just ravish in the diet of foolishness. And that's unhealthy. We can eat the nuts, we can eat the fruits, we can eat the vegetables, we can eat as right, we can use scales and measure out our food. And yet we proclaim to continue a diet of foolishness that's just as unhealthy. One of, one of the things we can do, and we can have the right diet. I don't. So, but you can have the right diet. You can do the right exercises. I don't. And if you do something as foolish as worry, which is not in the Bible, and you're going to do your body just as much harm as you're to eat candy bars and fast food for the rest of your life. Which is not healthy itself. But you got the right diet, you got the right food, you got the right exercise, and yet you got a foolish intake of your body, whether it be worrying or something that's against the Word of God. And I'll tell you what it spells out to be. The wages of sin is death. And that's written to Christians. We die because we are sinners. We die because we're foolish. Let's take one or two simple sins, okay? I'm not going to go on the broad scale of it. Let's take a sin that we all have done. We have all stolen a pen, pencil, paper clip, or something. Me? If you want your pen back, don't give me your pen for me to write something down. Chances are I'm going to keep it. Just something I do. I, somehow I come home, empty my pockets, and I got pens. I got enough pens. All right? If I go up to a telephone booth, whatever that thing is, I find a quarter or a dime, I'm going to steal it. I'm not going to go find out who, who put that quarter or dime in there. Okay, we're theft, thief. We've all stolen something. I have gone into the refrigerator taking something that's not mine, even though I don't re realize and I've eaten it, and that's a theft. That's a thief. I'm saved. I'm born again. I study my Bible, I teach others. It's so foolish to say, hey, does this belong to somebody? Hey, this is not mine. Put it down. And again, out of my heart comes foolishness. There are times I have not made my father glad in me. My dad's unsaved. As far as the ministry he knows and what I got, he, I don't know today, this situation, but I know in his house, in his sitting room, he would have a picture of the children holding gospel signs. And I know when I'm talking to his friends, he would say, hey, you know, my son, he, he's a preacher. I'm not, but I mean, he thinks, you know, the church and all that. But, but you know, Though I go against what he believes, because he doesn't believe in God, he's like, man, my son is so, wow, look at him. Uh, I'm not a fool. But I guarantee the day that when he found out from his boss that I was smoking at the bus stop, I don't think he would have been too glad. Uh, 
I don't think so. And other things I probably made him unhappy. And there's some things I made him unhappy, made him mad, and I can't tell you. It's foolish. Again, we, we dealt with the tongue again. There have been times I have listened to somebody and I have corrected myself by somebody saying something. And there are times that someone told me something and I didn't listen. And I'm reaping. Because I played the fool. There has been words out of my mouth I have said again that I should not have said. They may even have hurt somebody. Or even writing it down. I'm thinking about one case right now. Maybe. I don't know if I've done right. I don't know if I did well. Maybe I did. Maybe it's a 50-50. Honestly 50-50. But. If it points to 51-49. Being foolish. I shouldn't have done it. Then I'm the fool. And maybe I had a diet of foolishness. I know my physical diet of food is foolish, it's not healthy, it's not right. I'm suffering from that. Uh, hopefully Proverbs 16.22 is not me because I give much, much instruction. I give much advice as far as scripture. I hope I am the understanding of a wellspring. And I've lied. I've been part of those preacher stories too myself. And when I said that, I was repenting of the sin that I've done with those preacher stories. And some people, oh, you shouldn't be saying stuff like that. I'm just, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I hope you would have more respect to me by admitting my sins and then hiding them. I'm not going to tell you all. That'd be foolish. But the, the study, we're 72 fools we, we're up to now. We did number 72. And we've got a whole bunch more. We're in Proverbs. Last fools in 1 Peter 2. Well, 189 fools studies all together. I said last week, I apologize. I didn't do folly. We got over 100 more to go. I didn't realize that this fool study would hit me. And it makes 1 John 1, 9 more clear to me. The Bible says, if I confess my sins, I must. We must confess our sins in order to be forgiven and to be cleansed. When was the last time you confessed the sin of fool, foolish? Foolishness and folly. That was sure not ever on my lips, on my heart. 